Okay, everyone, this is Suzanne Brothers Varley, and I am coming to you live on Facebook. Uh, and I started on a little bit early, uh, mostly because I am talking to you in my car. <laughs> Gotta find a quiet place, right? So uh, thanks for being on today. And this is the third part of Let's Talk About Men. <laughs> Let's Talk Men. Okay, so um, Kay, it's really good to have you on. And Jennifer, thanks for watching too coming on live with us today this beautiful Monday and uh, we are gonna really talk about one of my favorite subjects today and uh, why it's a favorite is because you know just like a lot of things in our life we do so wrong for so long because we don't have any knowledge to do it maybe better so you're gonna hear about some things today and we're we're gonna talk about the love languages and so um, thank you for coming on Stacy it's good to have you and and um, I want you guys to write in uh, today what your love language is uh, and uh, or what one of your husbands are. Most people have two. Thanks, Megan. It's good to have you on. Most people have two love languages, and primary and secondary. And many of you will uh, do the, the uh, love language test, and this is really from Gary Chapman. He has done many uh, specials on this with spouse. Uh, in business with teenagers I really highly suggest that you take a look at his work I know he has some things that you can download on podcasts but also uh, just referring back to most of his books that I was luckily lucky enough to be able to have and read so thanks for coming on Abby it's good to have you on as well so this is a live broadcast called rich girl workshop I'm Suzanne Brothers Varley it's really nice to have you on I don't know how many we've recorded, but it's been a lot. And we have a lot of people that come on and then a lot of people who uh, come on later and listen to these. So this is really all about living a richer, more fuller life. And uh, we've been talking, this is the third week we've talked about men, spouses, uh, partners, however. So I'm gonna really talk about the context of love today, knowing that this could apply very much to your spouse, but also, know that this could be definitely your partner in life your children your adult children even people that you do business with so hi Gary, it's nice to have you on thanks for coming on and Becky thank you come for coming on I am talking to you all live from my car as I'm visiting my grandchildren today and this is one of the quietest places that I can go and hide <laughs> so they won't find me because there's a bunch of them <laughs> so I've got about seven grandchildren and they're younger they're waiting for me to come back so we can go to the reservoir I am gonna take this minute and talk with you guys because this is so fun to talk about the five language love languages hi Lori North it's really great to have you on as well so thank you guys okay so let's talk about this because the five love languages uh, that Gary talks about I don't know if he invented them or not but I'm just so glad he did early in my marriage I found that I was just absolutely not speaking my husband's love language but I really didn't know so I would do special things for him I would look for a service that I could do I was uh, constantly like making him little treats or doing extra special things for him and I felt like he just wasn't receiving it but little did I know that acts of service was not my husband's love language it would be like me speaking Chinese and he speaks Italian we were just like missing each other and then there were many times that he was speaking one of his love languages his quality of time and he would just kind of follow me around a lot and try to get my time and my attention hi Darla it's good to have you on too thank you for coming on so I what I discovered was that he was uh, he was demonstrating quality time with me and I that is not necessarily was not then my love language so we are going to talk about five love languages today and let's start with words of affirmation we're going to talk about quality time we're also going to talk a little bit about receiving gifts acts of service and physical touch those are the five now what are yours what is your love language because many times it's good to know what your love language is so you can tell your partner what it is and what makes you feel loved when your love tank is high when you feel loved you know how you act you're just more loving to other people you're more receptive you just feel better about life in general and don't you know I think that we've all experienced that so how do you know what your love language is 
Well, one of the things is you want to look for is what do you keep asking your spouse, husband, friend, relative, whatever, or person in that you're in business with, um, what do you keep asking for? Or what do you complain about? Or what makes you feel good? What the last time you really felt a great amount of love from someone or a situation, what was surrounding that? There's going to be some clues in here. So as you're typing out some of your comments about what your love language is, um, the, keep in mind that you really want to be able to know what yours is so you can instruct people in your life, but you also want to be able to know the man in your life or other people's because it's certainly a really good thing, right you guys? Right. So please comment about that. We want to hear you uh, tell us what yours is. Okay, so here we go. Denise, it's so good to have you on. Let's start with uh, the first one, which is absolutely my husband's, and that is words of affirmation. Um, so Mark Twain once commented that he could live two months on a good compliment. <laughs> okay, and uh, Solomon said that there's life and death in the power of the tongue. Words of affirmation are exactly that. They are more than a compliment. They are something very specific that you tell the person in your life. Um, they are, uh, it, it could be a note, it could be written definitely, or a message that is sent. Uh, it's really good to do in person, of course, and especially done with sincerity and especially very, very specific. So let me give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, some people like to receive words of affirmation when they're in a group. Maybe you're sitting around the kitchen table and you're going to give uh, your spouse a compliment. Honey, I just want to tell you that our family runs so much better because of all the wonderful things that you do for our family. And I noticed that you got the car packed for our next vacation, and that really means the world to all of us. Thank you so much for making our life so much better. Now, you guys, within that one, there are two, because there's active acts of service with packing the car, and there's also being very specific to your spouse about what they've done. So keep in mind that words of affirmation are really high on the list for a lot of people. Is it for you? Okay. Oh, Megan, words of affirmation, gifts, and all the others, right? <laughs> just Okay, when in doubt, just do all of them. In fact, isn't that funny? Because when you're dating, when you're dating someone or courting, uh, that is interesting because that other person and you yourself usually do all of them, all five of them. So then you get married and you've got a couple years under your belt and you might, you, one of your complaints might be, well, you know, he just never sits down and talks with me anymore. It seems like I have to chase him down to get his time. Well, that will be the next thing we talk about is quality time. So keep in mind that when you're courting, you probably demonstrate every single one of them. And that person's love tank definitely is full. Quality time. Okay, this is a big one in our family. But this is undivided attention to the other person. Keep in mind with undivided time or quality time is it's not something that you're doing like watching television. No, it is definitely where you are spending the time listening and in conversation or in an experience together. Because when you have an experience together, you're actually making a deposit in a bank. And that is so good for so many people. And uh, you guys know who, uh, if yours is quality time, which I know my Kara, hers is quality time as well, is this is a time when it's uninterrupted. So you have to really plan these many times, and especially those who have uh, small children, to be able to have that quality time together maybe after they've gone to bed or, or that you go away from the home so that you can have quality time. I would suggest no less than 20 minutes. Now, if you'll remember the first week, we talked about re-entry time, didn't we? Re-entry time is that's quality time spent. That's when you turn off every device that's when you spend quality time with your family, sitting around the table, in the front room, sitting up the bar stools together, where you have no other interaction except for their interaction. This is one of the areas I feel uh, in, as a family, that is so important to have meals together, especially dinner, because that is also quality time together. So uh, keep in mind that this is the vehicle that creates a sense of togetherness, okay? This is the vehicle. And uh, one of the byproducts of quality uh, activities is, like I said earlier, it provides a bank in which to draw from in, for years to come. Bridget, yours are words of affirmation. Okay. Oh, I love that. Thank you. And then acts of service. So you figured out what your two are. Don't you just love this? Because 
Um, if you are building a team or you're in business, it's very important that you figure out what other people's are. Sometimes we make a big mistake on only giving what ours are. So if we only give what ours are, again, we're speaking Chinese and they're speaking Italian and we're kind of feeling like we're missing the boat on some things. One of the things I like to ask people is when you were being raised, how did your parents or your family show their love for you? And that's usually what's going to be at least one of their love languages is how they were raised. And sometimes they have to think about that question. Okay, let's talk about the third one, which is receiving gifts. Now, receiving gifts is a gift, is a symbol of love. It's a symbol that I thought of you. It, because it's so symbolic, it can be just a gift that you just kind of gave to them for whatever. And it really, you guys, does not matter the cost of the gift. What matters is the thought of the gift, the thought that went into the gift. And uh, if you discover that you are married to someone whose primary love language is uh, gifts, then you can make this little investment every single day. It could be as small as a little shampoo that you got from a hotel with a little ribbon that said, thought you might like this. Um, it, remember, because it's not so much the amount of the gift, it's the, um, it's the way in which you present it as well. Many people find that it's really good to present a gift with words of affirmation. Uh, and that is particularly powerful one-on-one, -on -one, but it's also particularly powerful if you're in a group because it not only affirms who they are, but it shows it with a gift. Now, I gotta say that uh, my husband is also a collector of all the gifts that I've ever given him. So I know that this is kind of one of his secondary ones because he's never thrown any of them away. And in fact, they're displayed, many of them, uh, in his office. Uh, okay, so if you've ever, if you've, well, of course we all have had this, if we've ever uh, read things on the subject of love, it usually is indicated by a gift because it's giving of your spirit to your spirit to the other person if yours is gifts of uh, if yours is gifts then you know it <laughs> and uh, in my family that's how I was raised is with giving gifts or receiving gifts or a surprise gift that was definitely one of the number one uh, ways that especially my mom showed her love for her daughters okay so let's talk about uh, number four acts of service and I know that many of you are acts of service hi Deb it's good to have you on and she says that Mike is uh, words of affirmation and quality time and touch well we'll go to touch at the very end thanks Deb that's wonderful to hear that uh, when you know um, the person that you are uh, wanting to have this relationship with and you want to deepen your conviction you want to deepen the feeling that you have for one another really take a look and ask yourself Am I doing enough to fill up their love tank? Well, acts of service is one that I especially like to talk about because what we are doing is we are seeking to do things, little things, big things, that will service um, the guy in our life. And um, this could be small or big like I just talked about. And I want to go back to my notes a little bit because people tend to criticize their spouse most loudly in the area where they themselves have the deepest emotional need. So um, acts of service are done out of love. They are not done out of fear or guilt or resentment. Because you know you know that people can tell when they, uh, when they do things <laughs> or they're given a gift or they're given a word of affirmation or they're given a gift of any kind or acts of service if it's not purely, honestly, sincerely given. So make sure that you do uh, acts of service because you want to and because you want that person to receive it in a most generous way. So acts of service are done out of love, okay? Now, point this out specifically. What is an act of service? An act of service could be as little as bringing ice water to them while they're working in the yard. It could be as small as uh, making their lunch and um, uh, putting it out for them. It could be as little as um, acts of service as taking the car and having it washed when they had a busy Saturday afternoon. Do you see what I'm saying? Is it's things that you don't need to announce, it's just things that you do. Okay, so acts of service, and many of you are acts of service. In fact, Jeanette just says, hers is acts of service. Yay, Jeanette. <laughs> That's good to know, isn't it? Okay, so look for ways in which you can serve that other person. 
And you know, as we give this challenge to everybody, you're gonna be amazed at what it also does for you. Because any time you are increasing the love in your life, oh my gosh, doesn't it also make your heart swell? Susan, thanks for being on as well. Okay, let's talk about physical touch. I'm gonna to end with this. I have to laugh because physical touch, when I was teaching a large group of women in our church, many of them have little children. Some of them have multiple children, three and four. And this was always on their very lowest test. Part of their test was physical touch. And I, at first I thought, why? Well, and then it was obvious because they are being climbed on all day long. <laughs> They are holding a kid, picking up a kid, pulling back, and also children are just pretty much climbing on him. So physical touch, though, I want to go there for just a second because some people might think that it's a sexual thing. It's really not. A physical touch is a hug. It's a small touch. It's a pat on the back. It's a, it's a giving a, a, a hug to really anyone. And you know when someone likes physical touch because they will, they will really give you the body language like bring it on <laughs> and this particular time with coronavirus going on this is one of the things if your physical touch you are really really feeling the loss of it I think all of us are feeling the loss of it actually but physical touch with your spouse could be just lightly touching their arm as you walk by them it could be a little squeeze on the back of their neck it could be a pat on their hand but when you when you grab their hand or you do anything like that and you know that there's this physical touch, they have a tendency to kind of, you know, puff up a little bit. One uh, example I want to give of that, and I'm not sure I did this last week, but uh, we, uh, for 4th of July, we were up uh, with some friends uh, in Liberty, Utah, and uh, one of my son's friends, they, uh, they own a huge property. And uh, we were on an ATV ride with them, and his wife was in the middle, and I was on the side, and and he was driving and he was telling all about the property but his wife did something really sweet she took her hand and just put it over on his leg and he had an immediate response he kind of puffed up a little bit more and he smiled and even his countenance changed so physical touch okay so Holly yours is physical touch and so is Marie's oh that's great all right so we've talked a little bit about them let's just see if I on my notes I had anything else um, without physical touch, people who that's their primary one, without it they will feel unloved. And don't make the mistake of believing that physical touch is that which brings you uh, pleasure to you, but it also brings pleasure to your spouse. Okay, so today we've talked about that. I've, I've loved this particular topic. Again, uh, Gary Chapman, you can find him, I think, on YouTube, but also download a podcast. Uh, you can find the books in the library. There's many of them uh, with spouses, with yourself, and of course uh, with your teenage children. It's especially good, I believe, uh, when you're building a business and you really want to have that connection with the person that you're working with in a team, whatever. So let's, uh, let's do this. Let's practice all of them, right? And then let's ask our spouse, the men in our life, which feels better to them what they feel like they respond to. And you guys, sometimes you don't even need to ask. It'll be very apparent uh, within minutes of what they respond to. Okay, so again, last one we talked about was physical touch, acts of service, giving gifts, receiving gifts, uh, quality time, and words of affirmation. All right, you guys, let's get those guys and bring in a little more love in our life and uh, have a good time doing it as well. I so appreciate you being on the call with me today. Thank you for being patient about uh, how we're doing this, especially out of my day. Just want to tell you how much I appreciate being able to do these rich girl themes with all of you. God bless you in this week, and uh, let's give out there a little more love. And the love we give is also the love we will receive. Okay, you guys, good to have you on today. Bye for now. <laughs>